Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. I do want to encourage you, if you want even more Great Detectives action and to hear our earliest seasons, I've launched our Volume 1 feed. Go to volume1.greatdetectives.net. We're currently adding a week's worth of episodes every week, so we'll eventually crank that up to four weeks worth of episodes every week from the first season. A lot of great detectives listening pleasure from 2009 to 2012 going to be coming out over about the next year. So uh, take a listen over at volume1.greatdetectives.net. Well now let's get into this week's episode of Mr. Chameleon. The original air date September the 20th of 1950 and this one is The Day's Girl Murder Case. Next, Mr. Chameleon and the Dazed Girl Murder Case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters in his famous cases of crime and murder. Brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin and Philips Milk of Magnesia tablets. Mr. Chameleon, as you know, is the famous and dreaded detective who frequently uses a disguise to track down a killer. A disguise which at all times is recognized by the audience. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Dazed Girl Murder Case. It is three o'clock of a bright autumn afternoon, and in grim contrast to the brisk air and brilliant sunshine outside, we look into the foreboding office of the astute and dreaded Mr. Chameleon at police headquarters. Attracted by the beauty of the day, he steps to the window and gazes at the street below when suddenly his door is flung open and the commissioner of police hurriedly enters, saying... Uh, Chameleon, let me give you this quick. Yes, Commissioner? I'm sending Detective Arnold in with a dazed, hysterical girl who says she just saw a ghastly murder committed. What? I saw it. I saw it that horrible night. The blood. Easy, Miss. That's all she'll say, Chameleon. The knife and the blood. Uh. Oh, Miss Wren... This is Mr. Chameleon. The knife. The blood. Uh, Leave it to you, Chameleon. Maybe you can get something out of her. Bye. You look like a girl in need of a friend, Miss Rand. What do your friends call you? Eileen. But I have no friend. The only one I have. I saw murder this afternoon. It was my guardian, Glenville Ferguson. Oh, he was so kind. He couldn't believe there was wickedness in anyone. Eileen, uh, start at the beginning and tell me exactly what happened. Well, Mr. Chameleon, I was in my guardian's study this afternoon, sitting across the desk from him when he said... Eileen, dear, you're making me very happy. I know you're getting better. You'll soon be the girl you were when you came to me. Yes. But I still keep seeing murder in this house. Oh. But Eileen, don't get back on that track again. It's just what we're trying to cure. But I tell you, I beg you to listen. Your own sister, Mrs. Lambert, she's going to kill you. (laughs) Elizabeth going to kill me? Nonsense. She's bringing people to this house to murder them. I've heard the screams, the terror of it. (laughs) Well, at least she's not murdering anybody now. She's baking a loaf of bread. And any minute, she'll bring it in here. Hot and give each of us a piece. How's this for homemade bread, Glenville? Oh. Make your mouth water. Oh, you here too, Eileen? You, you haven't cut it. That knife on the tray. Eileen. I'm going back to my room. Eileen, don't, don't, don't. Stay. Watch out! Jump! 
She's coming behind you with a knife. Ah! <laughs> at last, Glenville, at last. The time to kill you has come. Ah! Oh, no, no. Oh. ran out of the house, Mr. Chameleon, and came here to police headquarters. Oh, the knife, the blood, the way she laughed. It's drumming in my ears. It's driving me mad. Detective Arnold, Dave, quick, get the car. Come along, Eileen. Here's the house, Mr. Chameleon. I'll, I'll give you my key. Now, let me open the door, Eileen. Here's the room, Mr. Chameleon, where my guardian was murdered. Huh. I don't see a body here, Dave. Not a sign, Mr. Chameleon. That's what she does. She murders people and destroys their bodies. I know. Hmm. I know. Eileen, where were you? I've been looking everywhere for you. Keep her away from me, Mr. Chameleon. She's the woman. My guardian sister, Mrs. Lambert. Easy, Eileen. There's nothing to be afraid of now. <gasps> Who are these men, Eileen? I'm Chameleon of the police. This is Detective Arnold. The police? Why are you here? To investigate the murder of your brother, Mrs. Lambert. Where is his body? His body? Why? Glenville? Glenville? Yes, Elizabeth? You call me? No. No! Oh, it, it can't be. I, I saw you murdered. Oh. Child, she's fainted, Elizabeth. I'll run up and get something to give her. I prefer that you give her nothing, Mrs. Lambert. What? Dave, you pick up Eileen, please. Put her on the sofa in the hall. Right. Mr. Chameleon, I've taken care of Eileen ever since she came here a year ago. For the present, the police are going to take care of her, Mrs. Lambert. I have no objections. But I can't understand your attitude. The girl is insane. I wonder. She's not insane, Elizabeth. Eileen's only subject to hallucinations, Mr. Chameleon. They'll, they'll soon pass over. Hallucinations and insanity are one and the same, Glenville. She came to police headquarters in an hysterical state. Insane state, you mean, Mr. Chameleon. And reported that she saw you murder your brother this morning. That doesn't surprise me, Mr. Chameleon. Strange it should you, a famous detective. Is Eileen the first case of insanity you've ever met with in your career? Besides, my brother, the murdered man, is standing right here. Mm-hmm. So he is. Well, I should think that's what would surprise you. It would. If it weren't for that big splotch of red on the carpet behind the desk. Where? It's not blood, Mr. Chameleon. I knocked over a bottle of red ink when I dusted my brother's desk early this morning. What's that, Elizabeth? I forgot to tell you, Glenville. Besides, Mr. Chameleon, what great mystery is there in a bit of red ink on a carpet? It's not a bit, Mrs. Lambert. It would take a quart to make that biggest splotch. What if it's a gallon? Does red ink indicate murder to you? I'm beginning to think you're as insane as Eileen, Mr. Chameleon. Who knows? Anyway, please leave the room, Mrs. Lambert. Why, I won't. I want to talk to your brother alone, Mrs. Lambert. Please leave. Don't make a scene, Elizabeth. Very well. I'll leave. But let me tell you, Mr. Chameleon, my brother is as insane as Eileen. Strange, Mr. Ferguson. Uh, when you said don't make a scene to your sister, it flashed across my mind she would have made a wonderful actress. Oh, that's what she was. And a great one, Mr. Chameleon. Oh, I don't recall ever seeing her. It was in South Africa. That's where I come from. Elizabeth was an idol there. You didn't follow the uh, profession yourself, did you? <laughs> Heavens no. I was in business, import and export. But I've lived in America some 20 years. Uh -huh. Tell me about Eileen. Now, she says that uh, she is your ward. It was a surprising thing, Mr. Chameleon. I knew her father years ago in Pretoria. Oh, so she comes from South Africa, too? Yes. I'd almost completely forgotten her father when I got a cable from his lawyer saying he died and made me Eileen's guardian. Uh -huh. That was a year ago. And on top of the cable, in popped Eileen. We all loved her on sight. Your uh, sister, Elizabeth, doesn't indicate that. Oh, well, she's highly strung, temperamental, always the actress. Mr. Chameleon, you know, but at heart she's kind and devoted. 
just like my son is. Your son? Yes. Tragedy for him. He married Eileen before... before... Your son uh, is married to her. Uh, does he think that she's insane? Yes. He and my sister. But I don't. I know she's not. She began getting temporary hallucinations when she learned the real truth about her father. Somebody told her. The real truth about her father? From believing that he was a rich and respected man, she learned he was a dangerous criminal. He was actually killed in a bank robbery. And Eileen did not know that until after his death. She was at school in Switzerland at the time. Some kind friends kept it from her. When she found it out, she... Uh, she... They developed the hallucinations that you speak of? Yes. Yes, that my sister Elizabeth lures people to this house, murders them, and does away with their bodies. It's horrible. But she'll recover, Mr. Camille. I know she will. Um, Mr. Glenville, do you notice an odor of acid in this house? I believe I do. I was wondering what it was. What do you think it can be? I don't know yet. It might be something pretty terrible. Let's wait until we find out. But what... Very glad to have met you, Mr. Glenville. I shall tell you when I know. Goodbye. Oh, Dave. You're still here in the hall waiting for me, eh? Well, you're looking brighter, Eileen. Yes, she came out of her faint pretty good, Mr. Chameleon. You don't think I'm insane about what's going on in this house, do you, Mr. Chameleon? No, Eileen, I don't. Come along. Dave Arnold and I will put you up in a hotel. No. No, I can't leave my guardian, Mr. Ferguson. She'll kill him. All right. If that's the way you feel. But I'll be back. I'm going to find out what's going on in this house. All right, Dave, let's go. Hey, what is all this about coming back here, Mr. Chameleon? That kid's nuts. We're out on a dud. We're coming back, Dave, tonight. Probably to dig up the body of a murdered person from under the garage that connects with the library. What? A body that's probably being eaten away in a buried acid tank. Or maybe there's more than one body. Holy mackerel. Dave, did you notice how long that man has been walking up and down in front of this house? Oh, that, that one-armed guy. Mm -hmm. Gosh, it slipped me. He was at the door asking to talk to you. Oh, all right, I'll talk to him. Okay. Hey, mister. This is Mr. Chameleon. Thank you, Detective Arnold. I don't want to intrude, Mr. Chameleon, but I think I can help you. Yes? How? By informing you that Eileen is not insane. She knows precisely what she's talking about. If you permit anyone in that house to put across to you that she is mad, you'll be making a frightful mistake. You seem to know a great deal. What's your name? When the proper time comes, I'll tell you. In the meanwhile, think of me as the man who knows. Don't listen oh, now. Oh, you... The next time I turn up, it will be when you need me most. Goodbye, Mr. Chameleon. Hey, how do you figure that bird, Mr. Chameleon? I think he's exactly what he claims, Dave. A man who knows a lot. And who'll turn up again at the right time. Looks like this is turning out to be a pretty dirty case. We've never been on a west one, Dave. All right, let's be off to headquarters. I want to pick up a couple of our boys to dig up under that garage tonight. Well, everything's set, Mr. Chameleon. Got a couple of the boys waiting with shovels ready for digging. When do we start? Well, it's uh, nine now and about half an hour, Dave. You better take a couple of charges of dynamite along. We may have to blow up the concrete floor. I hope we don't, though. Some kid just left this letter for you, Mr. Chameleon. Oh, thank you, Foley. What is it, Mr. Chameleon? Ah. I'll read it, Dave. Dear Chameleon, I've always admired you, so I'm giving you a tip-off. The parties you suspect are fixing to murder Eileen Wren in the bushes about 200 feet down from the 110th Street entrance to Central Park at 9.30, prompt tonight. Be there and you'll bag them all. Signed, a friend. It's that bird who called himself the man who knows. 
He's out to get you, Mr. Chameleon. Don't go. I'm going. And alone, Dave. Take your boys out to the mystery house and start digging. I'll meet you there later. <laughs> This is the spot, I guess. Hi, Chameleon. Yeah. So you fell for my bill, I do. <laughs> Smart cop. Well, bless my soul. Sandy Hauser. You gotta feel pretty proud, Chameleon. <laughs> I'm getting five grand for bumping you off. Drop that gun. Drop it. Why, that's very easy. I don't need it, Sandy. I've got three cops standing behind you. What? Are you dirty double cross? <laughs> You murderer, chameleon. You, you kill me. Hmm. He's dead, all right. Well, poor dumb Sandy. You shouldn't have looked around. Chameleon calling central headquarters. Foley talking, Mr. Chameleon. I just killed Sandy Hauser near 110th Street in the park. Pick up the body. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. And send a detail to surround the house where Detective Arnold is waiting for me. Get word to him that I'll be there right away. Gotcha. And put out every tracer on the force to get the lowdown on a man named Glenville Ferguson. And especially his sister, Elizabeth Lambert. Bye, Foley. <laughs> Mr. Chameleon and the Dazed Girl murder case continues in just a moment. It's only natural that when you have an ordinary headache, you want fast relief. And to find out how quickly Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work, all you need do is test it in a glass of water. What happens to a Bayer aspirin tablet in the glass also happens in your stomach. And the speed with which it disintegrates indicates the speed with which it's ready to go to work. When you make this test, you'll see that a Bayer aspirin tablet starts disintegrating almost instantly, is actually ready to go to work in two seconds. And that's one reason why it provides remarkably fast relief. So when you want something to relieve pain, be sure of how quickly it will act. Be sure with Bayer aspirin, a pain reliever you can see is ready to go to work in two seconds. And remember, Bayer aspirin also gives you dependable relief. No other pain reliever can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. When you buy, ask for it by name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the Dazed Girl Murder Case. It is a few minutes later, and we see Mr. Chameleon whispering to Detective Arnold as they quietly enter the garage, where he has said he believes the bodies of murdered persons will be found. And we hear him say... Have you unearthed anything yet, Dave? The boys are still digging, Mr. Chameleon. Uh -huh. Putting the earth on top of sacks to keep everything nice and quiet. Good. I think they hit it now, Dave. Quick, everybody. Put on those gas masks. Those acid fumes may be deadly. Hey, boys, put on these masks. Okay. Okay. Now quietly lift the top off that vat. It's loose. It's a vat, all right, Mr. Chameleon. But I don't see anything in it. Fish around the bottom, boys, with those grappling hooks. Good thing you brought them. It's part of a body, Mr. Chameleon. Uh, there's not much left of it, Dave. It seems to be in pieces. Keep on dragging the bottom. Okay. There comes a skull. Keep moving. We want to get out of here without being caught if we can. It's the rest of the body. Practically nothing left of it. Well, uh, there's not much for us to go on. We may be able to get some fingerprints, though. Yeah, maybe. 
All right, gather it up, Dave. Rush it to the laboratory. We can at least get the approximate height. And there's a bullet hole through the skull. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. Come along, Dave. That sounds like Eileen. Quick, Dave, come. What's going on here? He's trying to murder me, Mr. Chameleon. Keep him away. Who are you? I'm Jim Ferguson, this batty dame's husband. Glenville Ferguson's son. I'm not married to him. He's not my husband. I loathe him. Oh, don't let him touch me, Mr. Chameleon. I told you she was nuts, Mr. Chameleon. I don't have to murder her to get rid of her. She'll kill herself someday. I'm not married to him. Like to see the marriage license, Mr. Chameleon? I'll get it out of this drawer. Look out, Dave. He's got a gun. Sure. And I'll kill you before I'll be arrested on a crazy girl's word. I'll kill you anyhow. My Aunt Elizabeth told me you were after me. <laughs> no! Oh. Oh. Did you shoot him, Mr. Chameleon? I was just getting set when... No, no. The shot came through the window, Dave. It's lucky he's not dead. We need him in our business. But who fired the shot? I think that the man who calls himself the man who knows. He said he'd turn up when I needed him most. Oh, what next? Uh, look in that drawer. See if there is a marriage license there, Dave. Holy mackerel, there is. Look at it. Oh. Well, it seems to be in order. I, I never married Jim Ferguson. He's a loathsome creature. What's happened here? I heard a shot. Oh! This insane girl killed my nephew, Jim. He's not dead, Mrs. Lambert. Just a flesh wound. Glenville! Glenville! Come here. What is it, Elizabeth? This insane girl, Eileen, shot Jim. Eileen is in not insane, Elizabeth, and I don't believe she shot him. Are you all right, Jim, my boy? We're taking him to headquarters for treatment, Mr. Ferguson. Dave, you help him along, please. Chameleon's lying, Father. He's arresting me. You have no right to arrest this boy. No, Mrs. Lambert. I found a body in an acid vat under the garage of this house. I told you that girl Eileen was insane, Glenville. Oh, what has she been up to? This girl is behind everything, Mr. Chameleon. She's always shrieking about murder. I'm taking Eileen to headquarters, too, for safekeeping. Come along, Eileen. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Good night, Mrs. Lambert and Mr. Ferguson. Oh, what a night, Mr. Chameleon. You come over here, Dave, please. Yeah? I'll take these people in. You stay here. Take every radio out of this house and then call headquarters. Uh huh. Have every radio station broadcast that Mr. Chameleon is urgently in need of the party who called himself the man who knows and does. And ask him to come to my office in the morning. <laughs> And Mr. Chameleon's message bore fruit. For next morning, we find him in headquarters with a man who calls himself the man who knows. And we hear this man saying... As I was saying, Mr. Chameleon, my name is Talbot, and I am a police officer from South Africa. And uh, you are positive, Mr. Talbot, that the acid-soaked body we found was Elizabeth Lambert's husband, and that she murdered him when he traced her hair. Certainly. She was purposely trying to drive Eileen mad. She knew Eileen had actually seen her murder her husband. And I'm positive Elizabeth Lambert forged the marriage certificate between her nephew, Jim Ferguson, and Eileen. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was forged, all right. She knew Eileen, far from being poor, had inherited one of the biggest fortunes in South Africa. And she proposed to get her hands on it. She made Eileen believe her father was murdered and was a criminal. She did that to shatter that young girl's mind. Elizabeth Lambert didn't tell me that story, Talbot. Her brother, Glenville Ferguson, told me. But our reports show him to be strictly on the up and up. Then his sister put him up to telling you. He doesn't know what's going on half the time. Comedian. Did it ever occur to you that Eileen's insanity might be feigned and that she's our murderer? Oh, that's impossible, comedian. What about the body you fished out of the acid vat? It matches the Lambert woman's husband, doesn't it? It may be a plant of Eileen's. I know a way to find out, Talbot. Oh, how, comedian? A trigger man hired by someone in the murder house tried to spot me last night, and I killed him. I'm going to disguise myself as one of his pals, and I'm going to confront our suspects as his successor and offer to bump myself off for $5,000. The one who accepts is the murderer. Well, that's an idea, comedian. You go out with this, Talbot? I wouldn't miss it for a thousand pounds, comedian. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, later in the day, we see Mr. Chameleon in his disguise as Bill Tosco, trigger man, in the Ferguson home. And as he speaks in the voice of his disguise, he says, Uh, what's my proposition? My pal got bumped trying to bump Chameleon. I'll take the same chance that he did for five grand. I can get Chameleon. I know my way around. Don't fall for this, Aunt Elizabeth. I'm not, Jim. If you don't, lady, I turn you to the cops myself. You're a murderess, Mrs. Lambert. But if you give this man money to kill Mr. Chameleon, I'll warn him. I saw you kill a man myself. Eileen, be quiet. Don't listen to this girl, Tosco. This girl's insane. You told Chameleon she wasn't, Glenville Ferguson. I got that through the grapevine. Give him the money, Elizabeth. Don't go out for murder. Well, well, Ferguson, so you're the one. Cover him, Dave. Shoot to kill if he moves. Mr. Chameleon. Chameleon. Right the first time, I'm Chameleon. Listen, Chameleon, I didn't kill anybody. I told my sister to pay you off to keep her out of a scandalous mess. Keep him covered, Dave. Yes, sir. This is outrageous, Mr. Chameleon. My brother wouldn't hurt anybody. You're as crazy as this girl. Not so crazy that I failed to see that red ink on your carpet, Mrs. Lambert. And not so crazy that I didn't get the flash you and your brother were trying to drive this sweet girl mad by simulating a murder before her eyes. Handcuff Elizabeth Lambert, too, Dave. Call them both in. Just don't move, Elizabeth. I'm pretty handy with this gun. Well, Talbot, Mr. The Man Who Knows, who do you think was right in this case? I think we both were right, Mr. Comedian. <laughs> yes, it seems so. Well, let's have dinner together tonight. I think I owe you one. Okay, Dave, that's all. Charge them with first-degree murder. Tell them about the charms of the electric chair on the way to headquarters. <laughs> And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Now, for the first time, more and more people are getting the quick, effective relief they've always wanted from upset stomach, gas, heartburn and bloating, an overstuffed feeling, and other symptoms of acid indigestion. And the thing that's giving them this long-sought relief is a wonderful preparation called Philips Tablets. A truly remarkable medication, Philips Tablets ease away acid indigestion so quickly it's almost beyond belief. All you do is let two or three peppermint, pleasant-tasting Philips Tablets melt in your mouth, and in what seems like no time at all, you feel wonderful. The remarkably quick way that Philips Milk of Magnesia tablets relieve acid indigestion is due to the fact that they contain one of the fastest, most effective stomach sweeteners ever discovered. And they relieve your acid indigestion pleasantly, too. Their fresh, clean, peppermint flavor leaves your mouth feeling so good, lots of people find them as delightful to take as after-dinner mints. So try Philips tablets whenever you feel the slightest indication of acid indigestion. Just put two or three of them in your mouth and see how soon you get relief. Always carry Philips tablets with you to take after meals or wherever you may be when acid indigestion causes you distress. Pocket-sized tins of 30 tablets cost only 25 cents. Ask for Philips tablets. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces in The Broken Promise, Murder Case. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson with dialogue by Frank Hummert from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. It is directed by Richard Leonard with music by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. It's hard for you to notice a gradual fading of your smile, but other people do. And when your teeth are no longer as white and bright as they were, when improper cleaning gradually causes them to become dingy, your whole appearance suffers. To correct this, you need a dentifrice that not only helps prevent tooth decay, but also whitens and brightens your teeth. A dentifrice that really cleans them. And no dentifrice cleans teeth like powder. 
Try Dr. Lyon's tooth powder. And if you don't agree that it makes your teeth cleaner than your present dentifrice, whitens and brightens them so your smile sparkles with its old-time luster, your money will be refunded. Get either regular or ammoniated Dr. Lyon's tooth powder. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Broken Promise murder case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Okay, there is some silly stuff in this episode. Like, uh, all Mr. Chameleon had was a hunch, which even in 1950 is not going to get you a warrant to dig up someone's property. And of course, no police professional is going to come over as one who knows. I love the melodramatic mystery, but that's just silly. That said, I think this episode was just a great time. It's definitely not your typical Mr. Chameleon story with a little bit of suspense built in. Some massive over-the-top acting, which I think is just perfect for this pace and quite a few surprises along the way. We also learned a vital life lesson, which is don't hire a hitman who follows for the hey, look over there, the police trick. Overall, this was just a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Listener comments and feedback now, and we have this from Stephen, uh, who writes... Uh, uh, regarding the Fashion World murder case, I assume the son switched from whiskey to port for the same reason he stayed home instead of going out. He was trying to get on his dad's good side so he get could uh, approval for his marriage. Hmm. Well, I'd never thought about that. Does that really work with alcoholic drinks? Drinking someone's favorite drink with them to get on their good side? I don't know, but I suppose if it doesn't matter whether it would actually work, and I don't think it sounded like it did. It seemed to make his dad more suspicious than anything else, but I guess I can see how he th might have thought it would. Then we have some comments on YouTube uh, regarding uh, uh, Mr. Chameleon. On the episode, The Dusty Room a Murder Case, T.W. says of it, chock full of overacting women. And Jerry says, just like my dating history. Well, thanks for sharing, Jerry. And now let's go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Stephanie, Patreon supporter since March 2020, currently supporting us at the Seamus level of $4 or more per month. Now, I also do need to note that we are actually running out of previously uncirculated episodes of Mr. Chameleon. We only have three more episodes of the series left to play. After that, we will have more uncirculated episodes. Between one and three, I've got to listen to a couple of things uh, and make sure we're on track to be sure. But more on that in weeks to come. Of course, uh, next week is vacation week. Uh, that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, please rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. Mr. Chameleon returns in two weeks. Next Tuesday, we'll feature a program from our archives. But join us back here tomorrow for Dangerous Assignment, where... Go on in, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. Hello, Martha. Hello, Martha. Well, Mr. Wheeler, this is Steve Mitchell. He's a foreign correspondent from the United States. Hello. Glad to know you, Mitchell. Meet my associate, Gordon Hemsley. Hi. How do you do? Well, I'll be running along, Wheeler. Ring me up as soon as Voorhees arrives, will you? Okay. Uh, good day, gentlemen. Well, what can I do for you, Mitchell? Well, I believe he'd like a story about the shooting night before last, Mr. Wheeler. That's right. There's not much to tell. Labord and I had dinner together, took a walk afterward. Labord felt like a cognac, so we stopped in a little place called La Patate. La Patate? Yes. That's slang for potato, isn't it? Yes. They think of some strange names for their bars. Anyway, we had a drink and left. 
Just as we went out the door, I heard some quick footsteps behind us. I started to turn around. The next thing I knew, one bullet whistled by my ear, another one hit the board and killed him. I see. I'd uh, like to take a look at this bar uh, where the shooting took place. La Patate? Yeah. Where is it? Well, it's sort of a hard place to find. Martha, why don't you show Mitchell where it is? All right with you, Mitchell. I can't think of a guide I'd rather have, Mr. Wheeler. Thank you. <laughs> I'll try not to get you lost, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> Would that be bad? Come on. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to Box 13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.